Today, I want to share with you the most genuine aspect of growing old. For many elderly people, there's always this lingering feeling that their later years are fraught with difficulties and unhappiness. It's as though they're the unluckiest and unhappiest individuals in the world. At this stage, they become increasingly envious of others' seemingly happier lives. But is this really the truth? I can tell you emphatically, no. There's a saying that goes, every family has its own share of hardships. Simply relying on one's own subjective thoughts or assumptions to draw conclusions is fundamentally flawed. Only by truly experiencing the lives of others can one understand that growing old is never easy for anyone. Today, I want to share the story of an elderly person, which is both authentic and realistic, in hopes that it may inspire you. As for destiny, when my wife passed away, I chose not to remarry. Since then, I've lived alone. Fortunately, my only son has grown up and started his own family. Watching him thrive in his personal and professional life felt like finally completing the task life had entrusted to me. I didn't know if I had been a successful father or not, but I had devoted myself wholeheartedly at every step, leaving no room for regrets. I've done my best, and that's all that matters. I chose not to intrude on my son and daughter-in-law's life, living alone in a small fishing village, making ends meet by selling fish. My days are simple and uneventful. I harbor no desires towards life, as long as my son's family is happy and prosperous, and I remain healthy and free from misfortune, I'm content. But life's fortunes can change in the blink of an eye. Tragedy struck when my son died in a car accident. After losing my wife, I had to endure the pain of burying my own child. I was consumed by despair, lying in bed for a month before mustering the strength to get up. I didn't know how to carry on, but life continued regardless. Two years later, my daughter-in-law remarried and took my granddaughter with her. I offered my blessings and gave my savings to my granddaughter fulfilling my wish as a grandfather for her to live a complete and happy life in her new home. Meanwhile, I remained in the small fishing village, fishing to sustain myself, weathering life storms amid the hustle and bustle of the marketplace. I continued to eke out a living, year after year, becoming increasingly frail and lonely. Nostalgia began to creep in, and waking up every day without anyone to talk to, Without anyone to inquire about my well-being, even a simple exchange of banter weighed heavily on me. In private, it's only my shadow that keeps me company. I had to confront the issue of elderly care. I didn't want to go to a nursing home. It felt like a collective dormitory devoid of warmth. At our age, our minds are a bit rigid, and we're reluctant to accept the inherent melancholy of life. Curling up in a corner of a nursing home, and during the final years of life, wasn't an option I was willing to consider. My remarried daughter-in-law had no obligation to care for me, and my granddaughter had her own struggles and challenges to contend with. I didn't want to burden them. I have a brother and a sister, both living in different cities. We hardly see each other throughout the year, but we exchange phone calls to check in. Every year, I send them some carefully selected seafood products to express my thoughts and concerns for them. As I approach the twilight of my life, familial ties become paramount. I worry about their well-being and health, something I neglected in my youth while caught up in the struggles of life. As I grow older, familial bonds surge like a tide, inundating my weathered heart. With each passing day, I realize that a chance encounter may never materialize again. So, I pack my bags, preparing to visit my siblings, to see how they're faring, and, truth be told, to see whose family is thriving. I want to find a less desolate place to spend my remaining years. I've saved enough for my retirement, but I don't want to squander it in a nursing home. I yearn to spend my twilight years in the warmth of familial companionship, to fulfill my lifelong desire. 
Upon arriving at my eldest brother's home after a long journey, the reunion fills me with overwhelming joy. After catching up on old times, I learn that both he and his wife are weary from years of toil, and their children have arranged for them to move to a nursing home. They are reluctant to go, but they have no say in the matter. Growing old is like a withered leaf, tossed about by the wind, confined to wherever it blows. If we ever meet again, you'll have to visit us at the nursing home, my eldest brother says sorrowfully, wiping away his tears. All I can do is tightly grasp his hand, offering what little comfort I can. At least my eldest brother still has his wife by his side, someone to talk to. But I am alone. My presence here only adds to their burden, so after a few days of companionship, I bid farewell and move on to my eldest sister's home. Since her husband's passing, my eldest sister has enjoyed a few years of freedom, raising her grandchildren before moving in with them. She now spends her days tirelessly caring for them, her body weary and her back aching. She brushes off her exhaustion, saying that as long as she can move, she mustn't idle. I need to accumulate good karma now that I'm back in the workforce. When I'm unable to move, I hope the younger generation won't find me troublesome when they have to care for me, she says, her words tugging at my heartstrings. Unable to bear witnessing her struggle, I decide not to impose and leave after a brief stay, making my way to my younger brother's home. My younger brother has always been an adventurous and resilient spirit, but his penchant for grandiosity has left him bankrupt. Despite boasting of a lifetime of wealth and extravagance, he now resides in a small apartment with his wife and children. He claims to have had his fill of extravagance and now desires a simple, frugal life. However, his wife confides in me that he's drowning in debt and his relationship with their children is strained. Yet, he remains stubborn and refuses to admit his mistakes or reconcile with his children. In his old age, he is left desolate and helpless. After completing this journey visiting my siblings, my heart is heavy with a profound sense of loss. I've come to realize that growing old is fraught with difficulties for everyone. We can't rely on others, we must fend for ourselves. Life has always been solitary, learning to embrace and endure loneliness is part of the journey. In the end, we only have ourselves, our own shadows, for company. This is the harsh reality. I'm ready to join my eldest brother and his wife in the nursing home. It seems the most suitable place for us. This elderly man's quest to reconnect with his family sheds light on the late life crises faced by each of the four seniors. My eldest brother losing his autonomy. My eldest sister struggling with physical decline. My younger brother facing financial ruin. And myself, confronting the harsh reality of loneliness. In the twilight years, the elderly grapple with loneliness, unable to alleviate their solitude. With time running short, they yearn for the love and care of their loved ones. But faced with the helplessness of relatives who seek refuge, they are powerless to offer solace. It may seem heartless, but it's a reality they must accept. This journey illustrates the diverse destinies of the elderly. As we age, the best life is one without growing up, without leaving home. Siblings sharing a pot, parents nurturing their children with utmost care, children growing up carefree. But as each establishes their own lives, the focus shifts, leaving little room for familial ties. Only when parents are absent and individuals are preoccupied with their careers or futures do they realize, in the twilight of their lives, the importance of family. Suddenly, they long to visit their siblings, hoping to find solace and companionship, only to discover that their siblings are grappling with similar struggles. Today's story encapsulates this reality. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and share. Lastly, I want to say that here, you'll never be alone.